future is today is the topic or the theme for this event. It fits well with my talk. The essence of my talk is to remind us that our today was determined by yesterday. As today, we determine the future for the next generation. By the end of my talk, I hope to have persuaded you that by staying culturally rooted, we can prosper economically and socially, and that we can assure a better future for the next generation. So here is my story. My name, in full as appears on my birth certificate, is Nora Esther Alinga Owaraga. I am the daughter of Ejakite engineer George William Obitio Owaraga, the chief, who is the son of the late Ejakite Yosia Engatun, who was among the chiefs of the Ikarigwok clan of the Iteso. The Iteso nation is one of the first nations of Uganda. I was born in 1968 after Christianity had taken root in Uganda. At the time I was born, provision was made on all official documents for one to state their Christian name. Now it has changed to first name. Nora and Esther, spelled E-S-T-A by the way, are my Christian names. And officially, my first name is Nora. Culturally, however, my first name is Alinga. A week after I was born, I was named in an Iteso naming ceremony. I was named after the mother of my father, my grandmother, Ajakite Joyce Mary Alinga. My name Alinga is part of my social capital. Within Iteso culture, the name that one is given signifies one's cultural roots. The philosophy that binds the Iteso nation, the creeping grass philosophy, Emuria Polia, may the grass take root and continue to grow and spread, espouses the Iteso nation's ideal of extending influence and power of its peoples. Emuria polia signifies that one has roots from where they came from. In a name, a child and the adult whom the child is named after are bestowed with pride and obligation. For the child, the pride of being the extension of a legacy, and for the adult, the assurance that their legacy will live on in flesh and blood. The child ideally grows up aspiring to achieve the greatness of their name, while the adult whom the child is named after nurtures the child to know who they are, to stay true to one's roots, and at the same time so high to achieve greatness. As a child, I had the privilege of spending significant time with my grandmother, during which she convinced me of her greatness and therefore what I should aspire to become. At the death of my grandmother, I inherited her house, which my father built for her. My inherited house is part of our, home, our ancestral homestead. I have deep roots on our ancestral land. Yes, very scary for whoever thinks of uprooting me from our ancestral land. At the death of my grandmother, it became my duty to extend the legacy of our name, Alinga. With such firm roots and therefore power, however imagined, I have journeyed on this our world. My firm roots have determined my choices. I wear multiple hearts, as my multiple hearts are related. At SIPA Uganda, we are mentors of rural men and women 
whom we motivate and encourage into self-reliant agents of positive change. Effective mentoring is done by example. Those mentored need to see how we, the mentors, are also agents of positive change. Hence, I am a humanist blogger with a passion. I aspire to make myself a thorn in the flesh of those Ugandans who are culturally dislocated and yet are in position of power, which logically require them to be culturally, culturally rooted in their own ethnic group as well as the Uganda, Ugandan nation. I align myself with my favorite philosopher of all time, Lawino, the main protagonist of an African classic, Okot P. Bitek. A literary work, Song of Lawino, is set in the 1960s and in the culture of another of Uganda's first nations, the Acholi. Lawino declared, I do not understand the ways of foreigners, but I do not despise their customs. Why should you despise yours? Listen, my husband, you are the son of a chief. The pumpkin in the old homestead must not be uprooted. Ignorance and shame provoke you to turn to foreign things. Lawino lectured her culturally dislocated husband with such passion and effectiveness that her lectures are still relevant for Uganda today. The symbolic meaning behind the pumpkin in the old homestead must not be uprooted is similar to the Iteso philosophy of Emuria Kolia, being rooted in one's culture and belonging and being part of a people. What proportion of Uganda's public and civil servants today are like Lawino, Ugandans who are culturally rooted? What proportion are like Lawino's husband, Ocho, Ugandans culturally dislocated? It is those who are like Ocho that I lament about the most in my blog posts. I would like to demonstrate to you that I am actually a purposeful lamenter. Being the sole, proper, sole proprietor of a social enterprise, a Linga Farms, is an example of me practicing the actions I advocate for in my blog posts. Some of you may be familiar with our products. Aturot, the dried calices of the hibiscus fruit, and ebale dried oyster mushroom. Aturot and Ebale are available in 13 outlets of five major supermarkets in Uganda. While distribution through supermarkets enables us to reach our high end market, we are also reaching our lower end market through our Alinga Farms shop in Bugolobi, in Kampala. Bugolobi market is best described as a farmer's market that is bustling with hundreds of vendors selling food and other commodities. In our shop, in addition to Aturot and Ebale, we sell other value-added food items that are characteristic of the Iteso cuisine. This is a significant achievement. Five years ago, a Linga Farms distribution was from the tiny kitchen in my flat. As you may have noticed, my roots have determined the branding of our products. Our brand names are in Ateso, the language of my people. Food for your good health is our slogan at Alinga Farms. All our value added products we vet for Ugandan cultural acceptability, as well as nutritional value, as well as social value, as well as economic value. Take, for example, Aturot. Our customers give us feedback that it gives them more energy and more blood. Our customers' feedback is kind of confirmed by researchers. According to researchers in the USA, hibiscus subdarifa is high in nutritional and medicinal value. It has antioxidants, making it good for our health and bodies. By taming free radicals, 
harmful molecules. Antioxidants help to maintain the body's good health. This is part of the social profit I advocate for, producing and selling products that impact positively on human life. Hibiscus fruit is economically viable. Researchers in the USA, for example, estimate that each year the USA imports more than 5,000 metric tons of dried calices of hibiscus fruit, valued at over 22 million US dollars for use in making herbal tea. Alinga Farms is located on two acres of land that is held under customary tenure. It is my father's land at Kadengele village in Palisa district in eastern Uganda, land which he inherited from his father. The land that Alinga Farms occupies surrounds my father's ancestral home, our family home, and it is on this land where my house, which I inherited from my grandmother, is located. Culturally, as a female member of our family, a powerful one at that, who is continuing the legacy of the matriarch Alinga, I, I am allowed access to customary land as long as the leader of our family, my father, allows it. Yes, some might think it a huge risk to invest on land for which you do not have clear ownership. Yes, it is indeed a huge risk. I am comforted, however, that as long as my father is still alive, I am safe. I am his daughter, and culturally, I am his mother, after all. I am also hopeful that because of the Alinga farm's significant social impact, the heir to my father's land will continue to allow me access to the land. It is important that I share and that I share that the idea for Alinga Farms came to me as a challenge. I am a fellow of the Africa Leadership Initiative East Africa, through which I am a member of the Aspen Global Leadership Network. It is within this fellowship that I was challenged by my fellows to come up with a project for the benefit of others less fortunate. I thus set up Alinga Farms with social impact in mind. My aunts socially co-own our mushroom production. They are, after all, the experts in sunshine-based value addition. My aunts are my associates. They are not my employees. I ensure that my associates receive high quality inputs. My associates ensure the production of high quality value added mushrooms. We pay them for the produce and then bring it to Kampala for packaging and marketing at international standard. This has positively impacted on my social life with my aunts. The tensions related to extended family dependencies are eliminated. I do not feel it a burden to provide for them and the dignity of my aunts is intact. They are receiving support from their daughter, but they are not beggars. They are productive businesswomen. Not all the mushrooms that my aunts produce do we sell. They retain the mushroom stains which are cut off. These cut offs provide them with a reliable source of nutrition. The mushroom cut offs have also given them a lot of power in the community. They use them as currency for paying for labor. Many of our village mates, fellow women especially, trade their labor in exchange for mushroom cutoffs. My aunts are also part of the network of over 50 outgrowers who supply us with dried calices of hibiscus fruits. Similar to the mushrooms, similar to the mushroom producers, each of our hibiscus farmers is an independent business person. We simply guarantee a market for their high quality produce. Alinga Farms has only one full-time employee, my personal assistant, Catherine. One of my brothers, Simon, the son of my father's late brother, is the farm manager. <clears throat> His job title is perhaps a bit deceiving for he does not earn a farm manager's salary. 
He is the one responsible for establishing and managing our, quality, our demonstrations on the farm. Like all farmers who supply us, we pay him for the high quality produce from the demonstrations and from his own farms. He gets a bit extra though, as he is the one who on behalf of Alinga Farms is doing the purchasing of hibiscus from our suppliers. We pay him a small commission fee. This social cultural model of doing business does have its challenges. For example, mushrooms are very light, could be transported by bicycle, but my aunts insist that we should pick up the produce from their homesteads, just so that their neighbors can see that they had a powerful visitor. Car tire marks in the compound are a huge status symbol. Sometimes the fuel for the pickup, in comparison to the produce picked up, does not make economic sense. But the cultural social capital more than covers for it. It allows me the privilege to connect with my roots. As I conclude, I make a plea to us all to recognize the importance of our cultural heritage, to recognize the non-commercial benefits that come from culture. Culture gives us our self-identity and character. When we give our children names, what do these names mean to them? How can the names inspire them to become rooted in their self-identity? Do our children know the language of their ancestors? How much of their heritage do our children lose when they are disconnected from their cultural elders, geographically and sometimes just because they are unable to communicate in the language of their ancestors? As one of my greatest heroes of all time, Nobel laureate Wangari Mathai observed, people without culture feel insecure and are obsessed with the acquisition of material things and public displays which give them a temporary security. Let us go back to our roots and extinguish our destructive cultural emptiness. Who I am today was determined by my ancestors. At my birth, it is our, it is, it was determined by my ancestors at my birth. It is our turn to determine the future of the next generation. I am a linger. I am culturally rooted. My journey continues. Emoria Polia. Thank you.